in a wonderful dream, wonderful interpretation of dream, Freud quotes a woman who uh, presented, didn't want to report to Freud a certain dream. She claimed that the dream is so indistinct and muddled that she doesn't remember it clearly and so on and so on. But then it became clear that uh, the woman was, I'm not criticizing her, very, very promiscuous and the true content of the dream was I screwed around a lot and it's uh, uh, indistinct and muddle, muddle she was pregnant who the father of my child is. And what Freud uh, does in a wonderful properly Hegelian way is he reads this formal feature of the dream. The woman complaining, oh, it's muddled, indistinct, I don't know what's happening, as a direct inscription of the repressed content. You see the beauty. The woman didn't want to confront the true problem. Even in the dream she was, sorry of using this stupid term, afraid to directly raise this question. Who is the father of my child? And I love this I mean, you know, all those stupid, they are now already out of fashion jokes about stupid blondines, you know. But I think some of their jokes, I think they are very intelligent. They are Hegelian. Did you hear it? You know, which is my favorite blondine joke. That a doctor tells her uh, that she is pregnant. No, you must know it, what she answers. Are you sure that the child is mine, you know? <laughs> that's, a, that's the Hegelian moment, if you want, you know. But okay, let's go here then. You know that something that is excluded from the content returns in a form, returns as a form. So again, a purely formal feature, the dream is muddled indistinct, is a return of what is repressed from the content. So you see where, so we don't have a simple duality. We have content, we have form, and the content is too wealthy, cannot fully express itself in the form. That's the simple version, you know, or even the mystical one, you know, like, oh, there is so much I want to say, I cannot fully express this, and so on and so on. No, Freud's here and Hegel's view is much more dialectical, refined. It's that, no, there is a content is never simply a content in itself. There is something primordially repressed in the content itself. And this repressed returns in the form. So that's the nice paradox. If you want to get in a dream or in any ex work of art which tries to express something, if you want to get all of content, it's wrong to say, oh, the form is enough, I have to look deeper. No, you have to include form in the content itself. I hope I'm clear here, this, uh, uh, how does it work, this uh, maybe you strip reversal. And it, again, it's the same with the dream of Freud. The content of the dream, to get a it, you have to include the purely formal element of the dream is indistinct, uh, muddled, and so on. This is the only trace left of the fact of what, uh, of what the dream is about. And maybe you remember in my... Uh, in my books, I give here a whole series of standard examples. For example, in melodramas, often you have a story which is too pathetic to stage it. And this, so it would have been ridiculous. But this pathetic excess then returns in the form, in a too pathetic music and so on and so on. Again, the secret. Of, it's not only that content is too mysterious, pe form cannot penetrate it. No, on, no, content is blocked, thwarted in itself. And to get at all of content, you need to include the form. You know who also did this in a, back to my beloved, although now he's half crazy, I heard, uh, Lars von Trier. Did you see his uh, Breaking the Waves? Mm, yeah. uh, 
it's not my favorite movie. I'm a primitive revenge feminist. I like, what is that one with Nicole Kidman? Mandalay. No, the first one. Sorry? Dogville. Yeah, isn't it? Sorry, I'm so low, but don't you like the last 10 minutes oh, when yeah. she takes revenge and oh, yeah. kills them? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You don't like it? I, I love it. I love it, yes. I'm against this, no, it's sublime not to take revenge. Fuck it, I want revenge. <laughs> <laughs> you kill them all, you know. <laughs> no, but let's go on. So it's great to see Kidman doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, Let's go on with uh, this. Uh, yeah, yes, we're uh, running out of time. Uh -huh. so. oh, we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so uh, content. Yes. So, uh, 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 Lars von Trier. Yes, he gives himself a wonderful reading of Breaking the Waves, where the story is ultra pathetic, but it's shot in a show the documentary way, handheld camera, clumsy cuts, and he says, if I were to, to shoot a movie directly in a way that would fit its form, it would collapse, it would appear ridiculous. So the only way to sell that story is to oppose form to it, to do the counter form. Again, you see my point. Again, it's not the usual hermeneutic triad. Form, content, and behind the content, some more mystical inner content. No, behind the content, it's the form itself. There is more in the form than in the content. <laughs>